I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my painting called Deep in the Forest. I hope you enjoy the video. You know, there's many things I really love about being an artist. I love interpreting my own ideas and showing them as to what I think about what something really looks like. But there's things I don't like about being an artist, and that's when you mess up. We all make some bad art sometimes, and what you do with it, that's up to you. But sometimes I like to cover it over and try something entirely different with it, because after all, what do I have to lose? I hope you'll enjoy it and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Now let's paint. I started with a bad painting, wet down the paper and covered it over with acrylic inks and plastic wrap. When it was all dry, I removed the plastic wrap and came up with this image. I turned it four different directions, saw something to work with, in my imagination, and began to sketch with a white pastel stick. I tried out several different ways to approach this, with some erasing and some redoing, until I found something I could work with, an image that seemed to be printed there and could be enhanced. This is some rocky shoreline deep in the forest with a stream running through. And it was sort of mysterious colors. And I liked them. I liked it a lot better than the original painting that I covered over. After I sketched out a basic, I mixed up some watery white gouache and began to paint in a light source and some sparkling reflections, as well as the areas that the light source would be reflecting against, like the top of the rocks, sparkles in the water. After I put the white gouache down, I would soften the edges, and here I am using straight watercolor. So I guess this becomes a mixed media painting with acrylic, watercolor, and some white pastel as well. I'm sketching in the trees directly with the watercolor brush. as well as reflections that might go into the water from them, marking it all out for myself to develop. Now, some people would find this to be a stimulating way to work, really drawing their imagination, and others would find it to be not nearly as much fun working with what's already there and trying to bring it out some. So it's not for everyone, but it is a really fun way to paint sometimes for me. In some places, I'm mixing the, the gouache with watercolor to make an opaque color, like the light green I just put down, to suggest some bushes at the bottom of the trees. And you will see me using my fingers a lot to smudge things around. As well as my brush. I'm laying the pencil down to remind myself where the reflection would be, because the colors would not show there. And that's the reflection from the tree behind it.
Now the acrylic glaze of acrylic ink on the paper makes the paper non-porous. So I can take colors off very easily from the watercolor when they don't work where I put them. And here you see me adding more of the white gouache because it faded too much. Again, I'm diluting it with water and the whiteness went away. So I'm adding more. This is pure cerulean blue. And cerulean blue is a little bit opaque anyway. And that just went down at the front of the water. Building up the trees some more and developing them. I can see a big old tree on the top left. So I'm bringing out the branches of it. As it moves downward, it's running into a bank of mist, which was created by the original application of white ink and plastic wrap on top. And I sort of like that white misty look there. So I left it and had the tree sort of run into it. And now I'm bringing in some more bright whites from my white acrylic ink and painting them directly on, as well as some white gouache. The less water I dilute it with, the brighter white I'm getting. Working with the gouache makes it easy to blend. Working with the white ink, once it's dry, it will not blend. So I have to choose which one I want to use, depending on whether I'm going to be satisfied with placement or need to remove it later, because you're not removing the ink. Here I'm adding some dark greens to the waters. And I'm also adding some dark indigo to shade out the rocks and the edge of the stream. Where the rocks touch the water and away from the light is going to be my darkest area. The mid tree I am making thicker and darker as well. And you could see painting through that white blur of ink that the tree remains light colored and it still looks like there's a little bank of mist there. I'm developing the near shoreline and painting in around the front central tree on the right to make it stand out. At this point, I have my composition laid out and I'm tweaking and adjusting to try to make it look right. Here I'm coming in and accenting the lights on the tops of the rocks. I'm putting down some white gouache lines and then blending them out. And finally moving to that foreground tree. This tree needs to be much more developed. It needs to have darks added and it needs to have highlights added. So when it appears three dimensional because it looks very flat right now. I'm putting some unusual colors into the bark. 
and adding some highlights on the edge. I'm not using any kind of image for inspiration. I'm not looking at any photographs, but rather painting by instinct as to what looks interesting for color and for composition. And now I'm working into this foreground tree again. I'm adding some bark rings to attempt to show the dimensionality of the tree. I'm adding some very strong darks down the middle of the tree and enhancing the bright colors around it. Those darks continue to dry later, as watercolor tends to do. So I re-added them many, many times. That knife is there as a marker for the blue coloring that I liked of the knife handle, because I decided to add some more blues into the painting, and I'm using that as a, an idea about where they might look good. I keep a pen knife in my watercolor set up so that I can slice it pieces of paper off of my blocks because I found that to be the best tool for removing paper from watercolor blocks. And the blue is going in all around the composition and I like how it looks. I'm painting in some lights between where the light's coming through the trees, just to make the trees stand out a little bit more. And also, I continue to add lights to the water where they faded out. Again, I'm using an ink pen and white ink to make some really bright edges on my rocks, but I don't want them to be lines, so after I put down the line, I give it a little smudge to soften it. I'm putting it where theoretically the light would be reflecting from the sky. I'm also using it to develop the formations of the rocks and show how they're formed. And to make the tree in the central foreground stand out some more. Where the water meets the rocks, I'm creating a little sparkle of light that you sometimes see when you're looking at a shoreline or rocks in the water. Just a little reflection. For my next step, I am bringing in stronger darks. Because again, my darks faded out. I'm primarily mixing together indigo and Van Dyke brown, but I'm also adding a little purple to the color to make a good strong dark without making it black. And you can see the rock formations that I'm painting in to try to make the rocks look believable even though they're fantastic colors. They could still look like rocks. My evaluation technique where I cover up from side to side and see what needs to be done and worked on. Obviously this tree needs a lot more work to look three-dimensional at all. So I'm adding some good dark colors 
and some dimensionality lines. I'm also developing the formation of the tree itself. And how it's growing. And it's starting to get a clue. But it's not there yet. Here I'm making the shoreline stand out a little more strongly and getting it a little bit more level and adding some sparkles of light to some areas and I'm using the white acrylic ink. Just about this time working with the white ink to make the front tree stand out a little bit more, I decided to suggest a face in the tree. I wonder if you can see it forming. Just a little hidden surprise to have some fun. And you can see the rings that I'm putting curving around the tree to show the bark lines. Now I'm not sure if this tree is suggesting a birch tree or a cherry tree, but both have these kinds of rings going around them. And it does help me to suggest some dimension in the tree. And in comes some stronger dorks. This will be about the third layer of darks that I'm adding to the tree because I'm just about done with the coal painting and it just needs to come out some more. Now can you see the face in the tree bark? I tried to make it pleasant. Signed and done. I hope you liked my painting, Deep in the Forest, and how I did it step by step. And you give it a thumbs up. When you subscribe to my videos, it's very helpful to me. And you can ring the bell below, and then you'll never miss a single video coming up again. There's also some links below that you can check out. You can see my art page on Facebook. You can see links to my blog. Uh, there's links to some products that I like to use to create my art. And there's also a link to my own art products page for purchase. Your comments are welcome. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.